Perfect. Um, so just a little bit about Gravitate. I mean, you all found us through our website, so I'm sure you know a little bit about us, but we've been in business for about 16 years. Uh, we're, we're somewhere in the 40 person range uh, in, in terms of size. Um, and I think you can go through the website and learn pretty much everything else you want to know about us. But if you have any questions about that, we're happy to answer those probably after the webinar is over. Um, but suffice to say, we've we built a few websites in our time, <laughs> and we have some experience in uh, how long it should take and and you know what what goes well and what doesn't. Um, and uh, here's our rough agenda. Um, so the sort of thesis here is uh, this quote by Peter Drucker: "Long range planning does not deal with future decisions, but with the future of present decisions." So you know whatever decisions you're making now are going to be affecting your organization in the weeks, months, and years to follow. Um, you can't just assume you're going to fix those decisions later. It's a, you, you've sort of taken that path on the road, and that's where you're going to be going. So um, in terms of agenda, uh, we've got um, – I'm, I'm going to bring in a, a sort of a pinch hitter for a minute to talk about why timeline is so important. <laughs> we'll get to him in a second. And then we're just going to go through some tips for, for the best ways to um, put together your timeline and build your plan. So. Um, you can read them here. I'm not going to read through them all one by one. We'll, we'll cover them as, as we get into them there. So, uh, with no further ado, I'm going to throw to I'm going to throw this over to Don Elliott, who's our director of production, to talk a little bit about why having the correct timeline is so important. All right, folks. This is Don Elliott here. Like Flint said, I am the director of production. So timelines are near and dear to my heart. Um, one of the things that I think just diving right into it that's important to understand about timelines is that it's not as simple as are they too long or too short or everything needs to be faster. It's more about is the timeline appropriate for what you're trying to accomplish. Faster is not necessarily always better, um, but longer you can lose momentum and then losing momentum can kill a project as well. So you have to find the right uh, balance between those two. To start, what we look at is what are the primary objectives of the project? So if we're talking about a website and a website launch, what's driving the website launch? What's driving the redesign, if that's what we're looking at? Um, a lot of times it's going to sound like there's something really specific. You know, a client's going to say, we have to hit this June 13th deadline. It's set in stone. We have this marketing information going out. Um, and it's, it's you know, it, incredibly often, and a lot of you guys have probably experienced it too, where once we start getting down to that timeline, and in particular if the client has to cover content, a lot of times that timeline suddenly becomes pretty flexible. Um, and I think what happens is there's a mentality in business, and especially in marketing, that you just got to move faster and faster. And sometimes quality or strategy gets thrown out the window because of that. So for our clients, what we, what we try to have them help them to understand is first, your website is your long-term strategy and your website is the hub for, if you're doing it right, the website is the hub for all of your marketing efforts. So if this very core that you're building, you can think about if, if you're building the engine of your car, that's not the part you want to skip on. That's not the part that you want to suddenly get um, you know, really fast and start cutting corners. If you really want to cut corners on the paint job, go ahead, but don't do it on the machinery that's going to keep you alive. Um, so that's the first thing is helping them understand that if we build this quickly and recklessly, then a year from now, there's no telling if the website's really going to be doing what it was supposed to do, nor is it still stable enough to keep building on and expanding. Um, so it's important to understand that. Another thing that uh, really helps us with our clients understanding why rushing isn't always a great idea is the client's really concerned about the budget all the time. They're very concerned about how we're spending time, how their money's being spent. Um, and so for them, the idea is, okay, let's say we want to spend 40 hours to design a home page and let's say an interior page. Um, and so for the client's perspective, okay, well, that's a week worth of work. Um, it's 40 hours a week, so you could get this done in one week. Why not? Instead of realizing that if we spread that 40 hours out over two weeks or even just over the weekend, that every night the, the designers 
going to obsess about their work already. It's in their nature in, in most of the positions in our, in our industry. That's the nature of the people who work there. We, we're driven to do good work. We're, that's, that's why we're attracted to this industry. So regardless of timelines or clients or scope, we're always going to be motivated to do good work. So if we take this 40 hours and we clump it in from Monday to Friday, what happens is the person comes in, they work their eight hours a day, and they think about it at night or when they go out for drinks in the afternoon. And so you're getting really more than 40 hours of work for, from them because you're getting their thought process in the evenings. Now, if you spread that out a little more or spread that out over a weekend, now you're really getting in depth. And the, the designer or the developer, whoever's solving the problem, is able to really marinate in it and, and, and know that they're getting the right solution. If we have to rush, then what we have to do is pick the first solution that comes to us. The first thing that works, that's what we've got to run with. It may be the right solution, it may be a great solution, but we'll never know because we all rushed and, and if there was a, a better, more brilliant solution, um, it's been lost now to the, to the ether of history. <laughs> so um, that I'd say is, is, is probably the, the biggest parts. Um, the, the, the last part I would say is that, and th this is tied to making decisions too quickly, um, but, but it's if, if you're not taking the time to truly sit back and question things, not just question how to do things, but question, is this even what we're supposed to be doing? Um, an RFP should not be a solution. Um, we've, we talk about that a lot, a lot here. It should be a, basically a series of questions that they want to find somebody to answer, a series of problems. If we dive in and all we're trying to do is solve the, the, uh, the RFP and hit a timeline, then all we're going to do is, is what's directed there. You want a nut screwed onto this? Well, screw a nut onto this. Whereas if, if, if we're responding to the RFP saying we're the experts that's going to solve this problem, now we may get halfway through and say, you know, we shouldn't be putting a nut on this. We need to have an entirely different piece of hardware because there's going to be way more stress on this piece than we had anticipated. And so now we got to throw the RFP out the window. Um, so that kind of flexibility is really important to have in a timeline. Otherwise, you're forced to choose whatever answer works the quickest and easiest. So is, I think that wraps it up on my part. Flynn, is there anything else you'd want me to talk about? Sounds good to me. Awesome. Okay, thanks, Don. I don't know if you guys can hear. He's, uh, uh, he's so passionate. He's pounding the table oh. <laughs> as he made his points. <laughs> uh, he's, a, he's a hand talker. But um, uh, seriously, the, you know, Don has more experience, I think, here with that than anybody uh, here. And um, I got a few quotes in here. I'm making fun of him a little bit. He, he hates colorful split spreadsheets, for example. Um, but, uh, but uh, so, you know, he's, he's been in the trenches with a bunch of these. And so, you know, these are real issues. And if, if you want something done quickly, you're, you're just making sacrifices. And I think the other thing that, you know, is important about this is <clears throat> relationship. So, you know, one of the big problems here is that um, timeline creates this stress in the in the relationship between a partner and uh, an agency, right? So you've got a client coming in and they say, we want to hit this timeline. And the agency says, wow, that's really difficult or possibly impossible. Um, you know, what are we going to do about that? And so, the, you know, the, the agency is kind of rolling their eyes and not because they hate that client, but because they've heard it a bunch of times. And on the client side, they're saying, well, I, you know, we have to hit this date and this is really important. It's been approved by our CEO. You know, they've got, um, maybe they've heard bad things about agencies. You know, there's, there's, there's agencies who take too long to do work and they navel gaze and they do all this other stuff. And so they may not be, um, the reputation out there, and some of this is deserved, but the reputation out there may not make uh, somebody who's, who's purchasing a new website think these guys are going to be w working with momentum the whole time. And, you know, what that causes is now here's a reason for people not to trust each other, each other right from the beginning. And trust is so important in this relationship because, you know, you need to be able to, um, down the road, um, have a more difficult discussion. And, it, it, you know, as an agency, you need to be able to go to your client and say, I'm worried about this solution. We feel like there's a better solution out there. It's really going to drive more business for you, or it's going to, you know, it, it's going to be a stronger marketing tool. Um, and, but, but we got to criticize you a little bit to do it. And we got to be really honest. And if you don't have trust, that's more difficult. And this, and the flip side is true as well. You know, the client needs to be able to have really clear feedback with the agency. So if there's sort of a, 
a lack of trust there, you got a problem. Um, and in addition to everything that Don just said, you also, you know, trying to do something in a month is harder than trying to do that same thing in six months. And, um, you know, you're, you're sort of limiting your options there. So that's the reason why we're having this conversation. Um, I feel like it's a conversation that not enough people are having. And uh, hopefully we have some real tips that'll, that'll help you out here. So I'm um, going to dive right into the actual discussion. <laughs> um, the, the first thing and probably the most important point that we can make is not to be arbitrary. And so, you know, I, I put the definition of arbitrary up there, but the, the point being, it seems like as, as somebody who hears a lot of people coming up with, with their proposed timeline, um, it, it seems like maybe there was a board meeting and everyone sat in the meeting and the CEO or the marketing director, whoever it was, said, great, here's our deadline. And so like, they tend to pick really juicy sounding dates. And so I've made a little chart over here on the right. It's a little bit of a joke, but it's also unfortunately true that you can see that you know, starting in July, clients will start telling us they want their website by the end of the year, which we say, oh, that's great. That's, you know, that's a, that's a doable timeline. We can do that. And then in August, we hear the same thing because it's a nice round sounding number. And then in September, we hear the same thing. And then in October, we hear the same thing. And as each month goes by, that gets more and more difficult. And they're, you know, these clients are not thinking, wow, a website should be three months, five months, six months. They're, they're assigning a date to the end of it. And it's really an arbitrary date. So the, the first thing that we want to do, and, and the goal of this is to get rid of that arbitrary factor and, and start basing this on, you know, what you really need, what your real goals are, and real world experience. Um, and, uh, so, you know, the other ships will kind of get into that, but I'd also like to talk about one other thing as well, which is there are times that it's not arbitrary, but it's still really difficult. Um, the, the example here on the left is the web at 25, um, site. And this, this was, um, done by a company called monkey do out of New York. They're just a two person company. And, um, this is done by the people who invented the web, right? <laughs> the, the, the clients in this case invented websites. They understand how the web works. And yet, you know, when the anniversary was coming up, they got down to the point where they only had two months to launch the site. And, you know, they just hadn't planned it well. Um, these are people who should absolutely know better. And they did it. And so they had this crazy deadline that they had to hit. And in this case, this company did it. I've, I've a sort of a feeling that if they had another month, it might have been a better experience, but they, they did hit it. But it's really important to know that um, when you're asking for that, to know that it's a little crazy. Because, it, you know, if you come in and say, I need this a month, and you, and you think that's a realistic timeline, you're really setting yourself up for some problems. Um, as opposed to saying, I know this is crazy and I know this could cause uh, a bunch of problems and we might have to choose different kinds of solutions than we would normally do. You know, all of a sudden you aren't going to maybe say, I want something that is, um, I don't know, uh, the next Facebook or something. It's something really, really complicated. You've got to scale back your expectations a little bit. So um, pretty straightforward. Don't be arbitrary. But um, even in times where you have to have a really tight deadline, you know, just understand what you're getting yourself into. Um, and then the next thing you got to do is you've got to define your scope. And this is difficult, uh, you know, exactly where to draw the line here, because part of what you should be doing is going to an agency to help you figure out what you're trying to do. If you've defined the answer to every question, um, you're not letting your, des your designers do their job and your developers and your digital strategists, right? So you've got to find a balance there. But the, so the main thing, and basically here what I'm saying, you know, here's a list of things that are part of scope. Concentrate on those first two. You know, what's the problem you're trying to solve or what are the problems you're trying to solve? Um, that's big. And the problem is not, by the way, I need a new website that looks better. Um, that, that might be an end result, but you don't need a website to look better just for the fact of looking better. You know, there's, you should really, if that's your answer to the problem we're trying to solve, you really need to dig a little bit deeper and start thinking about, um, uh, you know, things like, wow, our, our website isn't looking good and the users are having a hard time finding the content they want and therefore, wow, we have a lot of people coming to our site and no one's actually contacting us. Or, 
wow, we have a ton of people coming to our site, but a very small percentage are actually filling out our form. Um, something is wrong between the time they land on the site and the time they would contact us that we need to fix. Those are just examples. You can do a whole bunch of other, you know, each situation is different. So, um, but what are the problems you're trying to solve? And then what constitutes a successful solution? So at the end of the project, you know, you've launched this new site, how do you go to the agency and say, you did a great job or you did an okay job or, or you didn't do great, right? And so if you don't know those two things, you get a lot of work to do on your scope. And sometimes you can come to a, uh, an agency with only knowing those two things and they can help you figure out the rest of it. Um, but all the rest of these are really important too. So um, scale is also important. By scale, I mean, um, you know, a, 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 a small local restaurant needs a different scale of website than a large corporation. That's just how it is. And it sort of dovetails with the next one, which is the level of your competition. So, you know, you, you got to think about the scale of the, of the type of um, uh, solutions you need. And then you need to look at what your competitors are doing. And that's part of the scale as well. If all of your competitors have really robust marketing websites, then you probably need a really robust marketing website to compete with them. Um, keeping up with the Joneses kinds of things. And then we can go through the rest of these. I don't want to belabor this list too much. Um, I, I do think, and we'll get to content in a little bit, uh, how complex your message is, is really important um, because how well you, you've defined your message and how complicated it is to tell. If, that's, if one of your problems is I'm trying to describe our services and our, and our users are consistently confused, then, you know, that's a, <laughs> that's a problem that you've got to solve early on. It's not something that you can just tack on at the end. Um, there's a number of requirements here, but the, the last thing is also, the scope is also anything that the agency will need to do their job. And so, you know, if, if you come in at the end and say, by the way, I need this solution, and you haven't mentioned the whole time up to then, then you, you haven't sort of done your job as, an, as a, as a uh, client. And, you know, th this is where scope creep can, can come in because all of a sudden, um, you know, they didn't have all the information they needed at the beginning as part of the scope. So, and this is really open um, because, you know, I can't define scope. There's, there's so many different kinds of proje projects out there that we can't really, um, yeah, I can't really lump them all together, but, uh, you know, broadly define your scope. And then the next step here is once you get an idea for what you're trying to do, um, you know, contact a few agencies and see what they have to say. I, it's, you know, there's two really important things to, about this to focus on. One, um, only contact agencies whose work you like. It's completely worthless to contact an agency who you don't like their work uh, because, you, you know, why do you care how long it takes them to design a website? Um, it's not really helpful information. Um, and then the other thing is you have to do this before you set internal expectations about how long this is going to take. So if you've already had the meeting and everyone says, wow, we'd really like to launch a bit in about three months, and then you start calling around talking to agencies, it's going to be really hard to walk that back and change people's minds. Um, so you really have to do this early as opposed to late. And I have a list of questions here you can take a look at, but I, I really wanted to focus on the last three there. Um, and when you're talking to these agencies, here's some, some great questions to ask. One of them is, you know, point to a specific project and maybe it's similar to yours and somehow and say, how long did this project take to launch and why did it take so long? What were the challenges? You know, what were the, what were the holdups? What went quickly? Um, get really specific and then ask them if they had an extra month to work on that, what more they could have done. Um, you know, what was it that they had to leave on the table because they launched it in four months instead of five? Um, and, and kind of on the same tip, by the same token, what if you took a month away? Like if, you know, you were launching that same project, you have one less month to do it, what would you have to change in order to hit that deadline? And this is really important. I think, you know, th this is a conversation, I guess this is a conversation I'm asking for. <laughs> I wish more clients came to us with this. Because what we get instead is what you see on the right-hand side of this, is that um, nine out of 10 clients contact us and they have either a crazy deadline, there's no way that we could possibly hit it, or they have something that is just really, really aggressive. And maybe they know that it's aggressive, maybe they don't, but you end up with this weird situation where you're sort of getting hit with the same question over and over again, 
and you get a little, you get some scar tissue built up and you get a little jaded about it. And honestly, agencies get a little defensive. And so, you know, they're ready for somebody to say, hey, and by the way, we need this in two weeks. So somebody calls and you say, great, this looks like a great project. You guys look like an interesting company. Our services really align well with what you do. And, and maybe you even have a realistic budget for, for the budget range that we work in. And then timeline drops and you say, wow, there's nothing we can do for you, right? So what happens is agencies, because of this, start falling into different categories. I mean, they're businesses, right? So they have to pick their response to this thing that they hear all the time. And um, I sort of came up with four categories here. You know, you could define this a bunch of other ways as well. But um, they may become a crusader. And a crusader is an agency that when come, somebody calls and says, hey, I need a website, and it's even two weeks less than they would typically need. They are going to put a, a hard, bright line and say, we launch our sites in this amount of time or longer, period right? Because they've heard this so much that they just need to, they need to make sure that they are supporting their team because it really does wear down your team to do this all the time. So um, they've set a really bright line. Sometimes it's even on their site, you know, hey, we, all of our sites take six months or whatever it is. Um, it, a lot of companies are nervous to, to put that out there, but these companies have kind of gone the other way. So Crusaders is one group. Another reaction to that is to become sort of a soft peddler or, or think about this politically. And the assumption when you're doing that is, okay, so, you know, you say you want the site in two months. We know that's a little unrealistic. The, you know, the marketing director that we're talking to on the other side knows that's unrealistic. Even the CEOs, you know, he set a two-month deadline because he wants to see this done. But he knows really by the time it's all said and done, it may be twice that long, right? And so you're playing this game back and forth where no one's really being honest with each other. They're saying, yeah, we could, we could launch that in two months. That seems realistic. That's possible. Um, and, you know, here's the deadlines we'll have to meet. And by the way, they're pretty sure those deadlines aren't going to get met, for, you know, maybe by the client in this case. Um, and that they're going to end up pushing it out a little bit longer. And they're just going to save that discussion for later. Um, and by the way, Gravitate, we sometimes we're in those top two categories, <laughs> mainly where, you know, we're going to push back sometimes and other times we're going to say, okay, we know what it's, it takes to get in here because it's a really tough business decision to make. If we, if we just said we can do anything in any timeline, we'd have a lot more business. They may not give us the final payment, but they'd all give us the down payment. If they saw our work and said, you know, we can, we can get this up in a month. And so that's the next category here is the liar. So there's a lot of companies and I think I'm exercising some demons here. I can say it in this context and I can never say it to a client, which is you're going to talk to five companies. You're going to tell them you need your site in three weeks. Somebody is going to say, oh, sure, we can do that. And it's going to be a lie, <laughs> right? They are just telling you whatever they need to tell you to close the business. And once it's passed to whoever the person you're talking to, it's on to the designers or developers or whoever, and it's their problem. And, um, you know, it, this is really, really unscrupulous, but if you were running an agency, you can see how you might start to make this decision because you have people coming to you again and again and again with a certain request. And, you know, this is one of the possible outcomes to that. And then the last one of these is sort of a factory. And a factory is any, any company that just stamps out websites quickly. Um, not necessarily a lot of quality control or they're, they're a very generic solution. A lot of times these companies will be working in a specific industry, a you know, real estate site or something like that. Um, so the, you know, and there's a room for this. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. And I think there's clients we'd actually recommend that to. Um, you know, it's, it's a new business or a smaller business or the competition isn't particularly stiff or they're only in one small town or something like that. Um, the, the thing to remember about that, though, is a lot of times these sort of cookie cutter sites just look like the modern web looks. And so maybe they've adopted some flat design and they're responsive um, and they get nice clean colors and right. But the more of those there are out there, the less effective each one of those techniques is because it starts to look, just look generic. And so you may have a really clean template you work off of, but they're sort of following on the coattails of the companies who are doing really custom great design and coming up with, with brand new solutions. And so it just sort of erodes the back end of the industry. And, this, and in a way it pushes companies who do custom work forward as well. So I guess there's a benefit there. Um, uh, yeah, so moving on to the next categories here. Um, and these are really connected. Um, oh, sorry, one more point I want to make about um, consulting an expert. Um, 
And this is really directed at other agencies, more so than clients, although clients can probably learn something from this too. Um, and, and looking at who signed up for this webinar, it looks like we, we got a, a few agencies in there with, with potential clients. Um, the, you know, that reaction when you have the 10th, you know, potential client in a row get in touch with you with a really, really aggressive timeline, and you think, man, we might be able to take on one of these, but we can't take on 10 of these. This is crazy. Or none of these are doable. Um, it's, you know, that's super understandable, but I think it's something that agencies need to find a way to work through because, you know, the client's calling they have real reasons for thinking that. And, and, and you know, they, they may have no idea what a realistic timeline looks like. And they may have been battling with their CEO for three years to get their site redesigned. And he finally said yes, but he says, you have to do it in a month and a half or two months or whatever. And um, they're in a really tough situation. And they're, sometimes their job, their review, their, you know, their pay is on the line. You know, they've, they've been given this task and they've got to meet the goals that have been put in front of them. So it's hard to, you know, you just don't want to, <laughs> you don't want to get too bitter about this stuff and start snapping at people, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Is you want to, you know, you want to keep, you want to keep it in mind that, you know, these people have their own problems. And, you know, I bet you when your agency needs a blog post up, sometimes you're late on those. Or when you need to make a decision, sometimes they take a little bit longer than you expected. Or, you, it's, you know, you, you sort of got, um, provisional approval to try something new. So, um, you know, keep that in mind when you're talking to, to clients as well, because it is, um, it, it really harms the reputation of the industry <laughs> and makes us sometimes sound like design divas or like we're, uh, you know, we really you know, putting those hard lines in the sand, which setting boundaries is really good. But if, but if you, you know, if you're sort of terse and angry about it, it's not helpful. So um, experts, uh, be ready. If somebody's going to consult you, be nice to them. Um, the next two categories here, kind of related, uh, that's why we put them on the same sli slide, is one of them is know themselves and know thyself, and the other one is be realistic. And by know thyself, you know, the, the, the question here is, what's it take to launch a site on time? And the client is a huge part of that. And um, it's, you know, there's a lot of things they can do before the project. I mean, think about what you need to make a new website. and um, some organizations are just more prepared for it than others. And, you know, if they're not prepared, they're going to have to prepare during the project and that's going to make the project take longer, right? Pretty straightforward. Um, but, you know, how, how well do you know your audience is? Um, you know, what, uh, what sort of research have you done going into this? Um, how well defined are your goals? Uh, all those sorts of things are really, really important. Um, but there's also other things to consider. You know, the team schedule is really important. You know, if you have people who are working 60 hour weeks and you're trying to shoehorn in 10 more hours a week for each one of them, um, there's a good chance that they may not be able to give the agency feedback on the timeline that they need, or they may not be able to, um, you know, put together some content or a document about your clients fast enough for that agency to keep their momentum up. So team schedule is a big part of it. Workload is a big part of it. And then even, you know, holidays. I mean, it, you know, um, it, you may say you need a three month project and you're starting in an October. Well, guess what? Thanksgiving is going to be a dead week for the agency and probably for your, your company as well. And um, so it's Christmas and Christmas might be two dead weeks, depending on whether it falls on a Sunday or a Wednesday that year. So, you know, sometimes it's, it's helpful to just go look at your calendar and say, what holidays are going to be in there? All right, let's add a date of the project for every holiday. Who's going on vacation? Oh, our main marketing director is going to go on vacation for two weeks. Add two weeks to the project. Because it, it really is so important to be able to have that collaboration. And there's certain points where the agency can't move forward without your help. So, um, and then the last thing is team size. It's, this is an interesting balance to strike. Um, in our ideal world, we probably want our clients to have maybe a two to four person team we're working with, um, less than that. And it's hard to, um, for them to have enough time to do what we need them to do more than that. And decisions can be really painful because it's sort of decision by committee. And so that slows things down as well. Um, and then the reason why the two of these are connected though, is, you know, it, it's sort of be realistic about yourself, <laughs> about your own organization, because, this sort of pl planning fallacy um, idea that's been out there for a while is that if you have to 
if you have to figure out how long something's going to take, you're probably going to be wrong and you're probably going to underestimate it for the most part. Some people have gone the other way and they way overestimate it and they feel like they look like rock stars when they do it early. But for the most part, you're probably going to underestimate it because the world is built around doing everything as quickly as possible these days. So um, there's a study, uh, you, can look, you can find a bunch of studies on this, but there's one about some grad students who were trying to write their thesis and they, you know, they were asked, um, how long do you think this will take in a perfect world and if everything goes horribly wrong? And in a perfect world, they said, maybe 27 days sounded good. If everything went horribly wrong, it was around 48, 49 days. Um, well, the average time of actually completing it was closer to 56 days. So even their worst case scenario was still a week less than it actually took them to write that thesis and have it ready. And so they were really underestimating, you know, what it took for them to do that. And some of this, you know, that planning fallacy is sort of a, it's probably ingrained in, in humans and it's probably a survival technique. I mean, if you're, um, if you're going to climb a mountain and you know how much work it's going to take and how long it's going to take, you might think twice, but if you sort of, have the, this upbeat attitude about how fast you can get to the top, you're more likely to dive in and actually do it. And, and it's a funny thing, we just had a, we had a number of our, our team members do um, this 100 day challenge over the last couple months. And in talking to one of them after it was done, you know, I said, hey, what'd you learn from this? And she said, um, she said, you know, if I had it to do over again, I might not have even started. And so it was that whole uh, idea of, of a journey of a thousand steps starts with a single step, right? But um, you know, the planning fallacy kind of lets you dive into stuff that otherwise might be really, really scary. And so, um, you know, <laughs> you can add as much time as you want. You may still be wrong, I guess, as part of the, the takeaway from that as well. Um, and then the other thing to know about that, and this is sort of a, a project we've been working on internally, is uh, really helping to communicate to our clients how much time they're going to have to allocate to this project. Because it's one thing to say, Theoretically, um, yeah, we, we need a, it's going to be a very collaborative process. We're going to need your team to work with us quite a lot if you want to hit this timeline or this deadline. And they'll say, yeah, 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 of course, this is our number one priority. We have a crack team on it. We're ready to go. And that is so different from saying to them, okay, if you want to hit this deadline, we are going to need your team to commit to a two-hour meeting three days a week, a one-day turnaround on all the feedback you're giving us, um, in the middle of the project, we're going to need content. So we're going to need you to write a thousand words a day for like four weeks straight. You know, can you do that? And a lot of times the answer changes really quickly when you have that conversation. And so again, we're trying to understand that better. I think it's hard, you know, not everybody tracks their time. So it is sort of an estimation when it's all said and done. Um, but it is, you know, the, that's the role we're trying to play <laughs> to help clients be realistic about that. Because, uh, you know, as I mentioned up, up here, um, the most common reason why a project is delayed is actually because the client wasn't quite as ready for it as they thought that they were. Um, okay, and then this is this is the big one, and this is the one we've been talking about forever. Um, tons of other people are talking about it, which is planning for content. Um, it is th the biggest reason why projects are delayed. I said clients are the biggest are a big reason as well, but the biggest reason compared to um, you know, you would think maybe the designers would take longer than they're supposed to or the developer, developers would, but actually finalizing the content is the hardest thing. Some of this is because of that planning fallacy we talked about. And some of this is because content is just hard. And having, you know, you can have the best looking design in the world. And if your content is so-so, it's, it's not going to be effective. And, um, you know, we, ha we have a lot of companies that will contact us and say, we want a new website. And we'll just use the content from the current site. And, and it's kind of like, well, why bother having a new website then? Because um, if you're not rethinking the content, you're not really not rethinking your design. So we're just sort of putting a new skin on it. And, and that's where this Jeffrey Zeldman quote, Jeffrey Zeldman is the, um, uh, one of the founders of Web Standards. Um, and did, done quite a bit of design in his life. And, uh, you know, in that case, you're just decorating, right? You've just got, you've got this old content. It was okay. It wasn't really helping your clients uh, or your audiences. And now you're just going to redirect, redecorate it a little bit. And, and hopefully that's going to solve your problem. And typically that's not the problem. Um, typically, you know, th there's a deeper messaging problem you're trying to solve and, and how the website looks is a piece of that. Um, <laughs> if, I, if I was a little bit more clever, I might just, uh, on the myth of simplicity here, um, I might just leave it at this and let you read the quote and not say anything about it. 
Um, you know, I would not give a fig for simplicity on this side of complexity, but I would give my life for simplicity on the other side of complexity. Should speak for itself, but I feel like I should say a couple things about it. Um, you know, when people talk about the iPhone being really simple or great design being really simple, um, it's not a matter of just doing the simplest thing right out of the box. It's a matter of, it's a lot of work. And you've got to really understand the problem to come up with a simple solution. If you don't understand the problem, you throw 10 solutions at it, you know, on a website, maybe that means you have 25 links across the top to serve all your audiences. And that's one way to solve it. But, you know, we get a lot of clients who say, I want a really simple, intuitive site. And, um, you know, for some reason that seems easy <laughs> in, in people's minds. And it's actually really, really difficult. So um, pretty simple idea, I think, um, but, but something to keep in mind when you're putting a timeline together. Um, and then, you, you know, thinking long term about this is really important as well. A lot of these decisions are made really quickly. And, um, you know, that means they're not necessarily always made well. <laughs> and so thinking about, you know, your goals in the next five years and save your goals for the next two weeks or two months is really important in putting this timeline together. Um, it is, you know, it's a little bit like a payday loan. Um, if, if for some reason you don't have enough money in a given month and you go down and get a payday loan, um, well, now you're paying that back in the next month you're even you're in a hole. You, you know you're in a worse position than you were already, and you solved the problem um, of that one month of having enough money. You got this loan, but now you're sort of in this cycle of trying to catch up all the time. And so if you can if you can pull yourself out of that and think long term and as, as kind of stretch that analogy a little bit, maybe eat macaroni and cheese the rest of that month um, instead of getting the payday loan or, or top ramen or whatever it is. Um, you know, now you're in a position where the next month you're in a stronger place and you start building and going forward instead of always being reactionary. So, um, you know, and, and the thing is, a lot of times your clients don't care about when you launch the new site. They care the new site's up and the experience is great and they don't remember exactly when it launched. Your organization cares a lot and there may be something you're trying to coordinate with, which is really, really important. But um, you know, it's, it's mainly impressing your colleagues that you're doing. It's not really impressing your clients by making something uh, launch really quickly, but just, you know, just be okay. And, um, you know, some of the things you want to think about when you're thinking about um, why to take your time, I have a little chart here of how many sites are live online right now. You can see, you know, if you had a website in 1995, you had 23,000 competitors, right? So not really a lot of people you're up against. Um, and then in 2000, you see a huge jump. We're talking about 17 million, right? Which is huge. Um, but this is the year we're gonna we're gonna cross a billion websites, and so that means you have a you have 999 million 900 and the rest of it, other companies out there um, vying for your users' attention. And so what it takes to compete against a billion other websites is just so different than you know, even in 2010, which was a fifth of that. So it's, it's a pretty big change. And not only that, more and more companies are getting it and really investing in online marketing because it, it, it provides some of the best return on investment out there depending on the business. And so not only are there a billion websites, there's a lot of them are doing a really, really great job of, um, of marketing themselves. So you've got it, you're not just competing with more, you're competing with better. And there's more people in the game, there's more smart people out there doing it. So really doing something right is super important. And this is kind of fun. Um, uh, show you my inbox for a second there. Uh, this is kind of fun. This is where I got that data. <laughs> and you can actually watch, I don't know how well this is going to come across because uh, uh, the screen share only refreshes so quickly but you can actually watch your competitors grow. So if you're ever sitting there thinking, our website's good enough and we're doing okay, come to this page if you need to get motivated because um, you know, there, there's somebody new popping up every day and, and some of those people are gonna be in your industry or direct competitors or trying to take your audiences and, and you, you, know, you, you don't succeed by just doing something once and sort of leaving it alone. So, um, and then um, one other point I wanna make here, um, you know, correlates with this, which is we're talking kind of about projects in a way. We don't like to talk about projects a ton internally. I mean, it launched on the site's a project. But if you're thinking about your website as a product or a project, you're setting yourself up for failure because you're going to launch that and 
you're, you know, you've got this great new tool you're excited to use. And if you don't use it, you're not going to get the most out of it. It's like, you know, I got this new power drill. It's just sitting on the, on the shelf over there. It looks great. I pull it out every now and again, do a little something with it, but I, I'm not really, you know, it, it's not really making my house better or whatever that is. It's a weird analogy, but, um, you know, so you, you want to launch it and then you want to think about, well, what do we do next? How, what else do we do to be successful? How else do we solve these same problems? Um, and, and, and then the other thing that goes along with that, and this is, you know, this is about when you're thinking long term and maybe you're thinking about building a new website. Um, ideally, start earlier and plan ahead, right? And so instead of saying, hey, we need it in two months, start thinking about the year before you need it instead of, you know, two years after you needed it. And don't get me wrong, you know, we're working on this too. Uh, we're not perfect and we certainly have things. Um, we were working on stuff for this webinar yesterday that I wish we would have had done earlier in the week. Um, but it's up, we're live, we hit our deadline, everything's here. Um, and uh, next time we'll give ourselves a little more time to do it, so. And then I think it wouldn't be fair if we didn't give you a little insight into what our timelines look like. So we can't talk about what everybody else should be doing without um, you know, putting some of our own skin in the game here. So um, we've got, uh, you know, I'll, I'll just sort of on the, on the right here are a few things that you find when you look at this up. And this is the reason why we want to do this. And this is the reason why we want to, we're willing to share our information is um, there are 10, the top 10 results for how long does it take to launch a website. Um, not all of them actually have a timeline, you know, and they probably shouldn't, you know, they, they, they shouldn't just say, um, every website launches in this amount of time. So the ones that are doing it kind of, there's a problem there as well. But I get, there's everything from 48 hours to nine months here, um, which is crazy, right? 48 hours is crazy. You are not getting a good website in 48 hours. You're not getting a good website in a week. You might get something serviceable that's going to hold you over for a little while. But those are insane. Um, and, and I can't talk for every agency. I've seen the agencies out there who do great work, who claim to launch their sites in about three months. Um, I've seen companies that, you know, like the last one on this list, say six to nine months is their standard. All I can tell you is, you know, our, our typical site launches in about five months. Um, we, you know, we've, we've certainly had sites launch quicker than that. We've had clients come to us and, you know, they're super prepared and their team is ready to go and they've got this crazy deadline and they understand that we're going to have to make some sacrifices to launch on that date. And so maybe there's a phase two right after launch to flush out the other things we couldn't get to. Um, and then we've had clients who, you know, we, we came in planning to launch it in five months. And once we started working with our team, they just weren't ready. And um, it took more than a year. So, you know, there, there's no set answer here. And by the way, we don't, we don't love the idea of launching a site in over a year, but if that's what a company needs to go through to get a great site up, then that's time well spent. Um, you know, so it, a lot of this really comes down to how invested the client is and, and what they're what they're capable of and what, what they're willing to do. Um, and then a couple other things here. I mean, just to give you a feel for why our our projects take on average of five months, um, we have six major phases we go through in every one of them. But sort of the takeaway from this, there's research strategies, design, development, quality assurance, and launch. But the takeaway is that research and strategy, if we're talking about how many weeks the project is, are 30 to 45% of the, of the weeks we're going to take because we're really defining the problem or we're defining solutions. At that point, we feel like we can start design. Some companies don't do this. Um, um, so some companies don't do this and uh, they can get something up quicker, obviously. Um, but a lot of times what you end up doing is you've launched a site and realizing, and you realize that the, the solution isn't really working for you. So, um, you got to go back and make a bunch of changes to the site. So this, this is a really way to get yourself ahead. And it's time very, very well spent. We have clients who push back on that, and typically they don't end up being um, clients of ours because we can't, you know, we say this, this is valuable to us, it's not valuable to you. And if you like our other work, you know, this is the process that that other work went through. And so, um, you know, th this is how we arrived at that. So um, that's, those are all of our tips, nine tips. Um, Hopefully those are helpful to you. We'll be putting together, um, uh, you know, this will all go up in a blog post soon. There'll be a, a video recording of this webinar. Um, if we have any questions that we answer through the process, we'll, um, uh, you know, we'll, we'll make sure to include those down at the bottom. 
Um, and I'm going to try and answer a few questions now. I don't want to keep you guys on the phone too terribly long or on the line too, too terribly long. But um, once we, uh, you know, if we, so we'll answer a couple questions here and we'll put the rest in the comments when that, when that launches. Um, and I'll send all you guys a link when we get there. So, um, so here's one of the questions we got that was interesting. Um, and it is, uh, what are the options when the deadline is truly one month away? Right. So we got some, some and by the way, this happened last year. We had this happen last year and we you said they, the the um, the client, great client, great service. Um, they're willing to pay, by the way, whatever it took, <laughs> more or less to launch in a month. And um, but that was their deadline. And so the conversation we had with them in this particular case was, Listen, we can't launch a new site. They had an event coming up, right? That, that was why they had this deadline. We can't, we can't design and launch a brand new site for you in that amount of time. So the solution we gave them in this case, and there are different solutions out there, was that we just refreshed their current site. And we went through a really intense one-month process where we um, evaluated ev everything on the site, all the content that um, you could, you know, that was there, and tried to do our best to within that structure, within that series of limitations, come up with something better for this event. Um, but then we also got them to agree before they started that as soon as we did that, we're gonna start designing a real site. You know, the site that we really felt like showed everything they could do and, and, and allowed us the freedom to really do what we could. And so that was one solution. By the way, um, they had a really hard deadline of a month and a month in, um, they realized they wanted to do some more revisions, change some design, had some content questions, and it being a month and a half. So we committed on our end, and, and we hit all of our deadlines, but the client at the end of the day decided to push it out a couple of weeks because they didn't feel like that was enough time at the end of the day. So, um, and uh, uh, by the way, that site is, is in our portfolio now. I don't want to say who it is, but if you go look at our work page, um, one of those sites is the one that we launched the quick refresh and, and the larger site later. Um, if any of you guys have other questions, I don't think I said this at the beginning, um, there is a, a chat bar up at the top and you can go up there and, and add any um, questions you might have in there. Like I said, I'm probably only going to take one or two more. This went a little longer than we expected, but um, you know, feel free to throw any in there. And then once the blog post go up, goes up, you can also throw them in the, uh, the comments um, at the bottom and we can answer those, take a little bit more time to answer those then. Um, Joe, do we have any other questions? Okay. Wow. I was expecting, I thought we had another one coming in, but I guess that's it. So um, again, thank you so much everybody for joining. Um, we're excited to be back on the webinar bandwagon here and uh, hopefully this information was helpful to you and uh, uh, you know, feel free to email me if you have any questions afterwards. Like I said, we'll put that blog post up probably early next week and um, thanks. Thanks for joining us.